Good morning. In the gospel lesson, Jesus lists 16 things we, he expects of us. Oh boy, that's all we need. Let's discover what Jesus is preaching about today on this seventh Sunday of the Epiphany. Uh, the Epiphany is the uncovering of Christ, remember, to the wise men. We're continuing in this season. Next week is Transfiguration. And then off to Lent. So welcome.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Old Testament reading is from Genesis 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading, 1 Corinthians 15. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Why am I in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of a weed or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, 
a nether for animals, a nether for birds, and a nether for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for stars for star differs from star in glory. So is it with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, to one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
Come on up, children. Bring your offerings to Jesus. Well, I went to, you know, the place where I have my computer and I have my Bibles and I have books that teach me how to read the Bible. And it's so wonderful. But up on the wall, I have lots of these things. Look at a cross. This one comes from Africa, far away, but it comes from Africa. I don't remember the country. But look, there's a piece of wood that fell off. So that whoever made it took a piece of wood, cut it off, and then they put wood over the top of it. I have another cross. This, look how fancy that is. Isn't that fancy? Now, I don't know when children a long time ago, big children, little children, started put, thinking of crosses as to put up on their wall or even to put around their neck. But what I want you to think about today is whenever you see a cross, think this. God is telling you, I forgive you. So when you see the cross, when, if you go to our school, in the classroom, you see a cross, well, there, look at the cross says, this is God telling me, I love you, I forgive you. And maybe in your room at home, if you don't have a cross up on the wall, you're going to say, hey, mommy and daddy, I want a cross up on my wall. Maybe right over where my head sleeps. I guess you know you sleep like this. Maybe right above you. God says, I love you, I forgive you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the cross. It just reminds us what really happened. That you were really put up on the cross to die for our sins. And this is the most wonderful thing in all the world. In your name we pray, and what do we say? Amen. Thank you.
16 times our Lord gives an imperative in these verses. An imperative is a command for action to be done or performed by the disciples. And when you read these, they simply seem impossible. For they expose our shabby follow-through of our Christian faith. Just a few examples. Verse 29. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other. The word for strike is far more than a slap, but it's a punch to the jawbone. Jesus says, respond by offering the other jawbone. Another phrase, judge not and you will not be judged, is not doing away with the proper judgment in the court of law. Rather, as one person puts it, it's petty criticism, nitpicking, slandering, backstabbing. Jesus says that if you act this way, you will be nitpicked. Implied there is by God. As we confessed in the liturgy, if you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who could stand? Nobody. Or another one, give, and it will be given to you, I would call this a kingdom principle. Good measure, pressed down, running over. The idea is somebody putting out their garment and they're being dumped upon with all kinds of grain or seed to be taken home. That this life of living this way of lack of retribution or lack of reciprocity, just the generous life without looking for something to gain. It's a life that's overflowing unbelievable I would even say a freedom to act your true identity in Christ another writer says God created us to give that we imitate God and another we are made to mirror God in ourselves as persons. God created us to reflect himself, his heart, his actions. So true. But can you imagine somebody on a football or a basketball team and the leader is the leader of the team but is not willing to do what the team's supposed to do? What kind of leader is that? Behind and beneath and saturated in this text is the, our leader, Jesus Christ, who is asking of you, his disciples, not what he was unwilling to do, he is the one who offered his jawbone to be stricken. And the other, 
He's the one who receives the blows by people, but really directed by his father. He's the one who loved his enemies, you and the whole world. This text is saturated with the Christ who loves you. And this text is a baptismal text in this sense. In the waters of holy baptism, he dressed you with his holy righteous deeds, his apron of holiness. And now he's changed your life. Whoops. <laughs> he's changed your life and given you this life of baptismal reality of just giving, serving, loving. One writer put it, these 16 imperatives done by faith are moments of mercy. I said last night, not knowing that this was going to be a sunny day, but I heard that it was going to be 50-some degrees. I said, you know what? It's just so wonderful when there's a cloudy day, and then in the evening, and the clouds open, and the sun comes through, the rays of sunshine. These here descriptors of what we are to do and what we do are rays of sunshine, rays of light and freshness and mercy that penetrate this world of depravity and darkness and hatred and sin. You know this world, it's becoming the culture of America Somebody finds dirt on somebody with a text from 20 years ago. The media and people publish it. And they are what? Canceled. Somebody crosses you. And what do you want to do? You want to cancel them. Perhaps there's somebody here in this dear assembly that's offended you and you just avoid them or whatever by your inaction or by your behavior. What do you want to do? You want to cancel them. That's not a moment of mercy. That's not a ray of sunshine. Again, the absolute wonderful thing about Christianity is the cross. God canceled his son instead of you. And it's not only a one-time event. It was a one-time historical event. But the reality of it, God the Father continues to go by how he canceled his son instead of you. And we live under the sky of God canceling his son Technically, we call that the doctrine of justification. That God justifies us by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. The Holy Spirit working that in our hearts, through our ears and through the word. And the holy sacraments, this royal meal with the king of the king, his body and blood. It captures our hearts 
it captures our life. We've been talking about generosity for a while. I like what one writer says. That generosity is just not money. It is of our whole life. And then he cites Romans 12, 1. But Paul says, I urge you by the mercies of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Yes, our offerings or a portion or a piece. But they're just typical that we're not withholding anything from the one who did not withhold anything from us. And that's why I love this 783, take my life and let it be. Look what it says, take my life. Stanza two, take my hands. Three, take my voice. Take my lips. Take my intellect. Take my will. Take my heart. Take everything. He has it anyway. But by faith, we want to give everything back to him. And as you live your baptismal life in Christ, God uses you to impact others with this strange way of living of not cancellation. But showing mercy, showing mercy. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all your understanding will keep your hearts and minds in your wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord. O oh Lord, your servant Joseph endured hardship and struggle, yet believed it would come to good. Give us such tested faith and bring all things to completion according to your purposes in Christ, the new Adam, who has brought hope to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide your dear flock in the calling of an associate pastor, where it will likely be from the field, Give us a man after your own heart, faithful in doctrine, a deep love for people, and a joyful confidence in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Help all parents who have brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism, also to bring them to him faithfully in the divine service, that he may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Lord, in your mercy, let your love have its way with us, Lord. Lead us to expect no self-interested reward, but to love your enemies and serve those in need. Put an end to all bitterness and strife. Let forgiveness reign between each of us, even as Christ's blood covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. Uphold civil authority and those responsible to you for the welfare of our nation, state, and community. And, O oh Lord, we pray for those in the Ukraine and on the border there for peace, to hold back the evils there, we pray, to minimize loss of life. And especially we pray for the pastors there, Christian pastors and churches, that they're still able to preach your good news and give hope and comfort in the midst of horror and loss of life. Lord, in your mercy, comfort all who suffer, deliver the sick according to your will, and sustain them by your grace, those troubled 
in body or soul, especially Jeanette Beckman, Gary Hensel, Gary Shocker, Joe Reyes, Jason Abramowski, Alvin Pranchke, and those who we name in our hearts at this moment. Be with the dying and grant them peace at the last. Give your comfort to those who grieve. Grant your children patience and courage to endure every time of trial with hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the gift of this blessed sacrament, O Lord. Give us a right heart as we prepare to eat and drink Christ's true body and blood, that by it we will be equipped to love you above all and our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you will bring all things to completion according to your order and time. When Christ comes and all the dead are raised, number us, we pray, among the saints in glory, clothing the perishable with the imperishable and bringing us into eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he's now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient people, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Good morning. You may be seated. Wonderful to have you today and any visitors among us. Uh, welcome to Trinity. We want to ask for your patience. For We want to show you a three-minute video. You know, we're, we have the Let's Go event next week. And here's just a brief introductory video. So we thank Chuck and Tim for putting the, this up. Uh, we have next week the Saturday night service at 5 o'clock and then the 8 o'clock service on Sunday, but no 1045. Uh, in the place of Sunday school at 930 and 1045 will be uh, a wonderful presentation on Let's Go with Jesus for others and into the world. So the three priorities. Uh, so be sure to mark that on your calendar. We have some ladies coming down from Wisconsin because they're all fired up about the Dominican Republic and that would be for other or for into the world. Uh, there is a Lutheran church and school and orphanage down there. I've been there at least to the orphanage. Opportunity to reach outside of ourselves and help people, we pray. Also with Jesus, you know, we want to, by God's grace, refresh and or repurpose our facilities. Uh, put it up in the 21st century, and or 22nd century, 21st, 22nd century, 21st century. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> and we have a big opportunity. So here's the video. Now, while he's doing that, I want to give you an update on the call process. Uh, the call committee interviewed some candidates from the seminary. And after interviewing the candidates and those who were available, and there was only 70 candidates total from both seminaries, and so that's only 35 from each. And we said, you know what? We need somebody more with more ability, or maybe not ability, but maturity and experience. And so the call committee said, we got to go back to the field. And after talking to the placement directors, both at St. Louis and Fort Wayne, they just didn't have anybody else. Uh, we're in competition, you might say, with congregations from California, Texas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan in terms of, of team ministry. And so, and there's not only so many people who want to uh, consider team ministry, so the numbers kept dropping and dropping, and now we're going back to the field. So we trust the Lord in this whole process. So let's, are we ready? Let me shut off the lights up here.
need to work on the sound a bit, right? So we're going to work on that this week, but you get the gist of it. It's based on Mark 138. Let's go, what Jesus says, let's go on to the next towns because I must preach the gospel there also. And it, it is a significant moment in the life of Trinity to go forward. And you know, as our culture continues to slide away from Christian morality, you might say, and the gospel, we've got the gospel. So keep that in your prayers and be sure to come. Uh, I want to highlight two, two other things. We have the Lenten devotionals. As you go out, they're on the table to the back. And then also, remember, we're ordering new pyramids for Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. You can help contribute to that. I think the cost is $3,000. They're beautiful. If you go out and, go to the, and look at the table on the left, they're just gorgeous. Uh, anything else for God's people? Okay, God's peace be with you.